So we've seen some of the things we can do with calculations with Google Sheets. So let's go ahead and try to do some examples here. So I'm going to create a new spreadsheet. And now that I'm in my new spreadsheet, we'll just call this uh, example calculations. Now we can we can very easily start calculating if we just enter say two or equals two plus two that'll give us four. That one's pretty straightforward. There's not much to that. But we could also say uh, equals two minus two, which should give us zero. And we can use two times two. We're going to use the asterisk there instead of the uh, instead of an x, and we'll see four there. And we can do two divided by two. We use that forward slash. So basic calculations are pretty easy but we probably want to go a little bit further than that we probably want to actually create some calculations based on other numbers so if I have a number like 5 and 6 in cells a3 and a4 then I could say use a3 plus a4 now I can type that in I can type in a3 and a4 or I can hit the equal sign and then if I use my cursors my my cursor keys my left right up down then I I can select any cell and I could say A3 then I'll just hit the plus sign and then I'll move my cell again. I can also click on cells which will cause that to update. Which basically is just a different way to do the exact same thing. But as long as I can reference that cell name either by typing it in or moving around and selecting cells, I should be okay. Now you'll notice one thing that you can't do in, in a, uh, Google Sheets and that is hit equals and then have anything after it. Now it gives me this nice dialog that tells me what's wrong. If I don't want to enter a formula, just begin your text with an apostrophe. So if I just want to have an equal sign here, all I have to do is hit the apostrophe key, the one right next to your semicolon and colon key, and then I can hit equals, and you'll see that just shows up as just equals sign at that point. And I'll, I can do the same thing for plus. You know, it's not going to be okay to just have a plus. So. There we go. We can use the apostrophe then to kind of override the formula. We'll never see an apostrophe show up unless we hit apostrophe, apostrophe. So that's the only way to get one apostrophe. But you can see up here in the formula bar, we have two apostrophes. Just a way to tell Google Sheets to ignore everything that comes after. Now, we could also enter a whole bunch of numbers. You know, if I have, uh, say, a sequence of numbers, 35%, 36%, 38%, 39%. Uh, 32%, 38% again, and 41%. Now, I could say we're going to name this percentages, and we're going to name this range. So I'm going to select all of those. I can either select by holding the shift key and pressing down, or I can select everything just by clicking and dragging. So now I have a range selected here, and I can go into data, and I can say named range. So now I can give this a named range and I can call this percentages and you'll see here it's telling me on sheet one, which you can see down here, uh, cells E3 to E9. So that range is going to be E3 to E9. So now I can hit done and now anytime I need to perform some kind of calculation on these, these values, I can use that named range. So if I want to do something like, let's say I just want to see what the count of these values is, I could use count and then I can select all of these by clicking and dragging and I get seven or I can use count and I can call this percentages because I've already named that range and you'll notice as I type that once I get to percentages it's going to identify exactly what all of these values are now another great thing that you'll notice about the functions here is that whenever I type in one of the function names if I go into a new cell say count it's going to give me a description of what actually this function does as well as a hint to identify what it is that we should really be what parameters we should be supplying and every one of these has this nice learn more about count which I can click and it's going to tell me a nice little bit of detail about the count uh, function and what exactly it does and makes it really easy to kind of learn anything that you need to know from any one of these particular functions now I can also use a max if I want to know you know what the maximum is and we can just go ahead and say equals max percentages. So 41% is my highest percentage here. I can find out what the minimum is. Equals min percentages. 
and that will tell me what the minimum is. Now, I might also be interested in knowing what the average is. So we'll go ahead and say average uh, of percentages. And hit enter. And you can see that's 37%. So out of all of these. And in fact, I can make this a little bit more accurate if I want to show a few more decimal places. And it looks like it's an even 37%. That's, not, that's pretty good. I could sum all of these. The summing summing uh, percentages is probably not that useful, but if we want to sum these, we can see it adds up to 259%. But we can use functions on the aggregate values, on, on these kind of ranges or groups of values. We can also use basic functions, you know, so like if I wanted to create something to calculate the area of a circle, I could say radius is, let's say we have a circle with a radius of 5, then I can say the area is equal to pi times radius which is d9 times d9 which is pi times the radius squared so that'll give me the area of that circle and instead of doing d9 times d9 I could also do pow uh, d9 2 which is going to say raise d9 to the second power which should give me the exact same result so not all functions have or are used with ranges. Some functions are just used with individual values. In fact, pi is probably a, one of the simplest functions. It just gives you the actual value for pi. You can also use other basic functions like rand. Rand will give you a, a random number between 0 and 1. And every time I type something in my spreadsheet, you know, even if it's just basic characters, that's going to update and give me another random number. Probably not that useful in general, but there are some good uses for that when you get into actually needing to kind of make decisions. Um, another one that you might want to use is absolute values. So if we say a number here, uh, let's say negative 86, we can use the absolute value. And we can just use ABS as the absolute value function. And we can hit enter, and that's going to give us the absolute value. And you'll notice that if I type 33, that works the same way. Negative 2 works pretty much all for all of those different inputs. Uh, you can round numbers, so if I want to say I have a number here that's 3.271123.8, I can use round, round to round that number to say four decimal places. So that's going to give me that number rounded off. And each one of these functions, they're taking some inputs. So if I look at this up in my function bar, I have round, which is going to take inputs of this value and the number of places, and it's going to output something. So in this cell, I'm going to now see the value of this. Now, one of the other interesting things that you can do with functions in calculations in Excel, or in Google Sheets, excuse me, is uh, you can start chaining them together. So you can say, you know, we could have uh, a value here like 10, and then we could have a value that is this plus 5, and then we could say we're going to take this minus 100, then we're going to take the absolute value of this value here. So you can see here as we move up, each one of these is kind of like an input to the next value, the next phase of a calculation. And this is where Google Sheets gets very, very useful, is being able to kind of create these complex relationships between your functions and your calculations. In our next, exa next like, video, we're going to go through a longer example kind of showing how you can use these functions to build something useful. Thanks for watching.